What's up everybody? It's Justin at s &K Greenhouse and today I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a garden center tour. Maybe some things to look out for at your local garden center or if you're local, sure, come on in. But let's go ahead and start right off the bat with something that is very classic in the south. A hanging Boston fern. Nothing says the south like a hanging Boston fern. These are great for shade or part sun. Hanging off your porch, you're like, mm-mm, nothing looks like that green. So come on over here. If you're saying, I have a little too much sun for that, you should highly look at the <laughs> Kimberly Queen fern. Kimberly Queen ferns grow more upright. They take part or full sun, and they do not shed, which is awesome. And then, let me show you the asparagus fern. This is a really great fern for sun or shade, actually. It trails down. It's got a lot of, uh, just a very unique texture to it. A lot of people love these. These are also great hanging off your porch. Now, if you're saying, I got blazing sun, you're in the south like us, that afternoon sun's just brutal. Nothing's better than a diplodenia or a mandevilla. These are a little bit more climbing uh, diplodenias. Look at that red bloom. This is an annual where we live. If you're in Florida, it might come back for you. But just look at all the different colors of diplodenia. There's white, there's pink, there's red. Look how great that would look in a container. They have a short, compact bush form. Great in full sun, drought tolerant. Won't punish you if you forget to water. Now. If you love hummingbirds, check out this. This is called Hummingbird Falls. It's a type of salvia. And we grow these in baskets. We hang them up and hummingbirds will flock to them. You got these gorgeous blue blooms. And like all salvias, yes, it's great in part sun or full sun. Now, when it comes to you're at your garden center, there's the big three annuals that you're gonna see all the time. Verbena, Calabricola, and Petunias. This is a Petunia. There's all different shapes and colors and sizes. This is most of them mound or trail. This is a very pretty petunia by Proven Winners called Raspberry Rush. It's a super tunia. So if you see super tunia, that means it's very aggressive. Now a good example of the Calabricoa would be this one by Proven Winners. This is Pink Lemonade Prism. And these are great in containers or baskets. Excellent. And if you want a great spiller, Throw in some potato vine with it. Potato vine, especially the marguerite variety, is very aggressive. It'll trail down. Now, I said there was three. The other one is verbena. You're gonna see these at your garden center. Verbena has a very distinct bloom. They come in reds and whites and pinks and purples. This is like a variegated white and blue. Again, you can put this in the ground, but very excellent in containers or baskets. Now, if you look over here, you can see how we've put together some combinations already. Look at that speckled petunia mixed with this white verbena. Absolutely stunning. Great for part or full sun. One more. This is trailing vinca. Now vinca is another staple for full sun, just like the diplodenia. This can take all day hot afternoon sun. And in this basket, we have it mixed with chenille, which is this fuzzy little bloom. Isn't that pretty cool? And then evolvulus, which is this blue flower. And they go great together, making a trailing basket now if you don't want to mix your own containers a lot of times you can find planters already made up these are a great example of that some of these are for shade like if you see impatience that's an impatient it has a very distinct leaf better for shade or part sun now in the top here is a sun patient sun patients are great because they can take sun or shade if you see new guinea impatience that's strictly part sun or shade all right, this is a great example. <clears throat> Let me find it. Oh, it's over here. Of a lantana combination with sweet potato vine, sun patient, and a dark leaf begonia. Darker leaf begonias can typically take more sun, so this container would be excellent for full sun. Now, sometimes you might already own a container. You might say, I got my container, I just want stuff to put in it, and I don't want to think about it too much. Well, a lot of times at your local garden center, you can find pot fillers. Pot fillers have multiple plants in one kind of cheap pot where you can just pop that out, stick it down in your planter, and you're good to go. This one is for sun. It's an Angelonia Scavola Lantana combination. 
The Angelonia is more upright, gets kind of tall, but the Scivola, again, great for full sun. The Lantana, again, great for full sun. They'll kind of trail down and you just pop that in your container. Here's another good example. You got the darker leaf begonia, again, great in full sun. You got the miso. Miso is a trailing plant that comes down, red blooms, kind of matches the begonia red blooms. Another great example of a pot filler. Now this one over here is for shade. Fuchsia, again, fuchsia, great for attracting hummingbirds. This is Hypoestes and a New Guinea impatient. This combination is really great for shade. So look for those if you need a shaded uh, annual. You pop that in your container, you're good to go. One more pot filler I have to show you. These are gorgeous. This is, this is like a black petunia. Look at that velvety black. You got biddens, which contrast off each other very well. And then you have the white scavola. Good gosh, that looks so good. You just pop that in your container. Look, I mean that, what? That's crazy. That looks great. All right, follow me on back. No, don't you go that way. You come this way. Cause I want to show you, an <clears throat> oh no, you can go back this way because I want to show you these. This is Celosia Intense. This is a fabulous annual because it loves the sun. It can take the heat. It'll bloom till frost and the blooms are just so unique. Look at, look at these little fuzzy fingers. Isn't that crazy? Again, Celosia, if you want something a little different, a little bit unique. Now come on back over here because I got one of the best shade annuals you could possibly put. Maybe you have a covered porch. Maybe you have a back deck that never sees the sun. Let me show you what you can put in it. Caladiums. No, these are not elephant ears. And yes, they are an annual here in Shelby, North Carolina zone 7B. But you pop that in a container, it'll give you some height. Maybe you put some other annuals around it for shade like begonias, uh, impatiens, that kind of thing. And you have a beautiful, let me show you a different color. Come on over here. Look at this color, look at that. Look at the variegation in the, in the red uh, vein running through that. Can you see that? That's beautiful. All right, now let's talk about geraniums. Geraniums are like the fern, another staple in the south. You see these on people's porches, you see them everywhere. Now let me tell you something, the tag will say full sun, but here in the south, zone 7B, our afternoon sun's pretty harsh and I would keep geraniums out of the afternoon sun. I don't think I would put them in all day sun. Morning sun, afternoon uh, shade is a much better situation. And they're gonna come in uh, all different types of colors. Look at this coral color in a basket. All right, this is an old bloom. Let me show you real quick. With geraniums, pinch that off, you're done. Look how gorgeous that is. Pinch the old blooms off. You don't want that falling down on your foliage and rotting your plant. Keep those pinched off. Let me show you a different example. Whoa, almost lost my mic. I gotta calm down. I gotta calm down. Here is a purple geranium. It just poured all over my shoe because we water our plants at SK Greenhouse. Look at that. That's an goodness gracious, that's vibrant. That camera might not even be able to pick that up. It's so vibrant. Look, we just fully stocked annuals everywhere. Over here, some sun ones. Over here, some shade ones. Let's quickly go over some shade annuals like the Rieger or Hemulus begonias. They are absolutely gorgeous, great for a covered porch. Now, if you want something trailing, Swedish ivy, it's gonna trail down, looks great in containers. Coleus. Let me just tell you real quickly about coleus. There's all different colors. This one's Indian summer. This one is, I thought it was redhead, but it's Inferno orange. Okay, coleus love part sun, shade. Some of the newer coleus can take all day sun. Put these in a container. They grow huge most of the time. There's some, there's some kinds that stay short, short, but they grow huge most of the time and they look really good in containers. Your landscape, you mix them with something like New Guinea and Patience or Sun Patience. Again, look at the uh, Sun Patience. Sun or shade on these, absolutely gorgeous, but in full sun, they will drink more water. 
just know that now here's another annual for shade that is highly overlooked that is Tarina. Tarina comes in yellows, whites, blues. They make beautiful baskets that trail down, perfect for shade. Now let's talk about some sun-loving annuals because a lot of you guys have sun, no trees around. Lantana is a great one. I planted this last year, beautiful. There's different types of lantana. If you see a spreading lantana, that's more suited for a landscape. If you see anything like lucky lantana or bandana lantana those are more compact and great for sun mexican heather is another great uh, sun annual or cufia now dahlias one of my favorite annuals for sun this one is called fireball look at the bloom on that any kind of dahlia you see there's perennial dahlias these are annual dahlias but they're all going to be good in that part to full sun situation now come on over here this is one of my favorite annuals. I already talked about it, Angelonia. It's an upright annual, great for giving you some height or beds that you have, maybe you have a walkway, you don't want it growing into your walkway. Angelonia grows straight up and it gets fuller and fuller as the season goes. There's white, there's pink or uh, raspberry as they call this one, or there's a purplish blue, or there's, let me see if I could get cherry for you. There's cherry. Look at Angelonia, that is so beautiful. Great, again, part to full sun. Let's walk on over here, let's walk on over here. My mic almost fell out of my pocket. All right, let me show you a plant that not only does it not burn in full sun, it burns the sun. It's stronger than the sun. Scivola and Lantana. If you want something that truly takes the sun, the heat, this is a great combination. You can put it in the landscape or a pot. This is in a hanging basket. I love the gold and the blue off each other. Look at that just hanging. That is absolutely gorgeous and great for sun. All right, we've talked about this at the nursery a bajillion times. This is Cufia, or another name is Vermillionaire. Uh, Cufia is great for attracting hummingbirds. Proven Winners came out with their own Cufia called Vermillionaire. These little orange blooms will absolutely drive your hummingbirds crazy. I promise. Put one of these out and you're going to see hummingbirds. Now don't let this little plant fool you. It gets tall and it gets wide and it blooms all summer and it thrives in heat. Cufia, again, great for heat. Now we do carry a lot of supertunias. And we love supertunias around here because supertunias, again, proven winter brand, are very aggressive. So if you have a big planter or a big landscape and you're maybe far away from the road and you want people to see you for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles away, plant supertunias because they're super aggressive. Just make sure to feed them. This one's called Vista Bubblegum. We plant this in our planters out at the road and people about wreck trying to pull in here. Now, let me go back over here and show you another cool perennial. Now, again, this is a perennial for zones seven, eight, nine. This is, let me show you a better one. It's really showing out. Ruelia Raging Cajun. Now, Ruelia blooms like an annual, but it's actually a perennial. Look at those blooms. This one also attracts hummingbirds. Great in full sun, part sun, and just the way it looks in a landscape. Amazing, and it comes back around here. If you're in zone six, probably not coming back for you. More lantana, again, lantanas can come in a variety of shapes, sizes. This is the bandana one I was talking about. See that? If you at your garden center and you see bandana, bandana, bandana or one called Lucky, that is a compact lantana. If you see one like new gold, or spreading gold, you can already kind of see the difference in habit. This one's gonna spread, this one's gonna stay compact. Better for containers and baskets, better for the landscape. Lantana, write this down. Great for full sun, blooms all summer, great for attracting pollinators, great for planting around your garden and getting that squash and zucchini pollinated where it doesn't rot off the vine. Now come on down this way. I know what you're thinking. I heard you. I already know what you're thinking. You're saying, I got a lot of landscape beds. I need something economic. I can't just be buying all these four inch pots. 
Well, that's okay because flats or six packs exist at garden centers. Now this allows you to be economical and fill up large beds for a cheaper cost. This is Impatience. Impatience, again, great for shade. They come in six packs like this. And then you buy a whole flat and you usually get a deal like you do here. All right, but come on over here. Look at this Coleus. Excellent for shade or part sun. Comes 36 to a flat. Over here, you got dark leaf white begonias. Here's dark leaf red begonias. Check that out. Again, if you want more, if you got more sun, go with the darker leaf. If you got more shade, try, try the green leaf. Now again, I got zinnias down there. I got vinca down there. I got some marigolds down there. All comes in flats. Great for filling up large beds. Look for those at your garden center if you want to fill up a good space. Now come on over here. I got way more to show you. I'm just getting started here. Hang on to your tail. <laughs> this is a lantana combination. Again, that's the compact one. Looks really great in a container. And while we're on the subject of lantana, now we sell a lot of lantana in the south just because it's so great. This one's called Miss Huff. Now, a lot of people ask, doesn't lantana come back every year? Well, sometimes it does. And there's some varieties that are more hardy than other. This one, Miss Huff, is the most hardy that we have found. It typically comes back, but you better get ready because when it comes back the next year, shabam, it is huge. I mean, it turns into a full out bush. Now, if you have an area, look at the blooms on this. This is a canna lily. The variety is red, golden flame. All canna lilies are perennial for the most part, depending on your zone. What I love about canna lilies, not only are they hardy, not only do they spread, they are great for absorbing water in sumpy areas. You can plant it in well-drained soil, but you can also plant it where it's not well-drained and it'll wick up that water. And you can't say that about a lot of plants. Now here's two Baptisias I have. These are proven winners. There's pink lemonade, and then there's sparkling sapphire. Baptisia, is one of the most underestimated perennials because people see it like this and they're like, eh, I don't know if I want to plant that or not. But when they plant it and it comes back the next year, it's just ba bam They get full. They're full of blooms. They're great for just a gorgeous display. It's a very hardy, hardy perennial. Now let's come over here. Let me talk about Allium. Now, what I love about Allium, it's a late summer to fall bloomer. So if you need some things in succession, your blooms are running out. This will start blooming at the end of summer. It's very hardy. This one is called Millennium. Let me show you that there. Millennium has these little purple balls on top and it just looks beautiful. It's actually in the onion family. Don't let that scare you. It's still a great, great perennial. Now, let, while we're right here, let's talk about roses. We sell around here, sorry about the sirens, a lot of knockout roses. There's double red. Look at that. Knockout roses are highly, highly disease resistant. They're also very pest resistant. There's not a lot of spraying and, and pruning that you need to do. Check out the double pink. Very, very pretty. Now, maybe you're saying, I don't want a rose that gets five foot tall. I want something that stays low. Well, drift roses might be for you. Drift roses, here's the pink. Here's the red. Here's an apricot color. Now what I love about drift roses, they're a ground cover rose. They only get about a foot, foot and a half tall, but they spread two or three feet. And this is a great, great ground cover that's beautiful, better than just like a plain old juniper, even though I love junipers, but this will give you some color. All right, I cannot walk by these without talking about Invincible Wee White. Years ago, Proven Winters came out with Invincible Hydrangea. It's a taller, huge hydrangea. It's very pretty. But then they came out with an Invincible 
wee white, which is a dwarf compact form. This blooms all summer, has very strong stems, and I think you can pretty much grow this in full sun. It's pretty rare for a hydrangea. Let me show you some hydrangeas that I love if you want to pop a color like Bloomstruck. Now this is Endless Summer. Endless Summer came out with a lot of different hydrangeas. You're going to see them all over your garden centers. This one is Bloomstruck and what I love about it, it's purple. Check that out. Now the blooms right now are pink, but that's because the soil is more neutral. You throw a little acidifier in there, make your soil more acidic, the blooms will turn to purple. Same with these pink ones over here. Look at the texture on these blooms. That's absolutely gorgeous. This is another endless summer uh, variety. This one's called Pop Star. I'm a pop star, not a doctor. Look at the blue blooms on that white pot. That's absolutely gorgeous. This one's great for containers. Blooms all summer. Yes, it's pink now. Throw some acidifier in there. It will turn to blue. Now, I seen you creeping up on me but I got to show you one of my favorite day lilies. This is Primal Scream. Now they call it Primal Scream because I don't know why, but it's a big, huge orange bloom. Again, proven winners. We could not find this one for years. It's been out for a while, but nobody's grown it around here. So S&K decided to grow these. This is S&K grown. I think we potted these up bare root back in January. And now we're to another perennial that I love. This is Cat's Pajamas Nepeta. Now, Nepeta is a great ground cover, sort of. It does continue to spread. When you have a mass planting of Nepeta, it's gorgeous. Those blue blooms show up from a mile away. They're about that tall. They cover a large area. They're very reliable. These are going to come back for you every year. But I'll tell you something that won't come back every year. Not in here. Maybe if you're in Florida, maybe if you're California, but we are in the South. And this is Bougainvillea. Bougainvillea. This is a very delicate looking flower. There's not much anything like, like it. We put these in baskets. They trail down. Some people train them up a trellis. Very, very hardy for sun. This makes the sun cower down. Come on over here. Let me show you some succulents that are hardy. People want to grow succulents outside sometimes, but you know, the truth is with succulents outside, if you're in this zone, they freeze. The moisture in the petals freeze and it rots the plant. Not on hens and chicks. Hens and chicks are tough as nails. Let me show you a couple of them. There's a red variety and a green variety. They're very pretty. You can see they have multiple babies. They will spread over time. They grow kind of slow, but they are hardy. They can take sun or shade and those are great for if you kill things. Look at raspberries in containers. If you see this brand Bushel and Berry, they've come out with a series of fruiting shrubs that are all great for containers. They all stay compact. They got blueberries, blackberries. This one is a raspberry and it's called raspberry shortcake. Now I don't see any on here to sample for you that are ripe. Oh wait, here's a ripe one. Look at that Al. A raspberry right off the vine. Excellent. All right. My favorite hosta, not really, it's just a good one. Some and substance. This is a larger growing hosta. If you see hostas at your garden center, this is a great perennial for shade. Don't put this in full sun. Morning sun, afternoon shade, or total shade. Either way, it's going to grow up and be nice. Now, this is a scented citronella or geranium. Yeah, people don't know that citronella is a scented geranium. This is lemony, citrusy smelling, and it repels insects and mosquitoes in a close vicinity. Stick this on your porch. Hopefully you don't get bit. No, there's no guarantees on that. Come on over here. Now, a lot of people want a vine that blooms all summer, can take full sun, and comes back every year. What might that be? A clematis vine. And clematis vines come in all different colors. This one's pink, mink. There's another one called Sweet Summer Love. And this is one of about 
one bajillion varieties of clematis, clematis vines that are out there. Some have big blooms, some have little blooms, some bloom a lot of little clusters. Some are just big blooms everywhere and showy. I love them for trellises, arbors, pergolas, fences, you name it. And let me show you, I was gonna show you this one. Let me show you an even better one. If you want a butterfly bush, one that stays compact, one that blooms all summer, come on over here. This is Puckster Amethyst. Now, Puckster Amethyst is one of the most dwarf compact butterfly bushes on the market. It only gets about two to three foot tall, blooms all summer, and Amethyst is a purple variety, much larger blooms than some of the other ones. I love this one for a landscape or a container. I just thought of something. We gotta come over here. This is one of the most exciting plants I've had in a long time. Come on, follow me. This is Lady Banks Climbing Rose. Yes, a climbing rose. Let me tell you what's special about this. Not only will it climb up your fences, your pergolas, your, your trellises, whatever. This one produces at maturity during the season up to 50,000 blooms, 50,000 yellow clusters of blooms. Very pretty. Nobody talks about Lady Banks. It's a good one. Now let me show you this one over here from Proven Winners. I'm going back to hydrangeas because I forgot about this one. This is Little Lime Punch. Now this was relatively new, but what you get with this is white and red panicle style blooms. And the thing about hydrangeas, the panicle styles can take your sun, your macrophyllas, they're more the mop head. Keep them out of the afternoon sun, especially here in the south. Look at the blooms on that. Absolutely gorgeous. All right, well I gotta show you this one real quick. This one is incredibly rare. I don't always have it. This is a dwarf Leland Cypress called Shorty. Now, a lot of growers don't mess with this one, probably because it's too slow. This is probably already seven, eight years old. It only grows a few inches a year. Excellent for the landscape or container. You put this in a container, it'll last in there a very long time. Or if you're in the landscape and you want to soften up a wall or you just need something by a walkway that doesn't get too big, Shorty, probably like a five foot, by two foot plant. Let's go on over here. Err, look at this thing right. <laughs> this is Orangeola Japanese maple. Very pretty. It's a lace leaf. This one's not going to get too tall, going to grow wide. Some others to look for at your garden center is Red Dragon, Crimson Queen, Tamukiyama and orangeola because orangeola is going to turn a bright orange in the fall it leaves out this burgundy orange i think i have one of these so i know this is one of the best maples out there <laughs> well folks there's your tour i hope this gives you some inspiration to go out to your local garden center and just conquer it or if you're local feel free to shop here we're in shelby north carolina and until next time become a plant person <laughs>